Okay, so our equation here tells us that we start with sodium nitrate. It reacts with calcium fluoride to create what? Okay, we're going to try and figure out what this is going to create, okay? And then the question below tells us that if we start with 83.2 grams of sodium nitrate, how many grams of calcium nitrate will be produced, okay? So we're going to start by answering just this question right here first, okay? We're going to start here. Sodium nitrate reacts with calcium fluoride. So in order to get our balanced reaction here, we've got to build this equation. So sodium nitrate's chemical formula should be what? NaNO3. Do we agree? What's the charge of sodium? What group is so sodium in? Sodium's in group one, which means it has a plus one charge. Okay, nitrate's charge is one. minus one. So this is an, a balanced formula. Okay, if we take sodium, which is plus one, nitrate, which is minus one, and we cross down those charges, it's going to give us ones on both. Okay, so there's our first. Uh, calcium fluoride is our second reactant. What do we need for calcium fluoride? CaF2. Why is it F2? No, not necessarily. No, it's not a... When we... Listen, when we balance our equations, calcium is a plus 2, fluorine is a minus 1. We cross down the charges, which we would, we would have CaF2. Okay? Diatomics don't make any difference when, we're, when they're bonded with another element. Okay? Diatomics are only 2 when they're by themselves in elemental form. Okay? So there's our two reactants. Now we want to form our products here. So in a double displacement reaction, what happens to our cations and anions? They switch places. So calcium should form with nitrate. Fluorine should form with sodium. Now we can't just automatically assume that since there's only one calcium here, it's going to form with one nitrate. We have to rebuild that formula so that it's balanced. So calcium is a plus 2. So calcium is plus 2. Nitrate is minus 1. So that means I need to cross these two charges down. And that will give me Ca... NO3, 2. Okay, that's my uh, formula for calcium nitrate. And what's my other product then? <coughs> what's the name of my other product? Oops. Sodium fluoride. So Na... F, yep, just NaF. It does matter. Oh, you mean of the two products? Yeah. No, no. It doesn't make any difference if we list calcium nitrate first or sodium fluoride first. Yep, it doesn't make a difference. Either one of these two products could have been listed first, just like any of these two reactants could have been listed first. Okay? So now we need to balance our equation. Because we built our equation, we need to balance it. Yeah. Why is it NaF and not NaF2? Because sodium's charge is plus one. Fluorine's charge is minus one, so it's just a balanced chemical formula. So... The, now, when we account for the two is when we balance the equation, okay? So we need to go ahead and get this equation balanced. You can go ahead and do that yourself. Yeah or no? Okay. Tell me what it is. Two, one, one, two. So we have two sodiums on this side, two sodiums on this side, two nitrates here, two nitrates here. Two fluorines, two fluorines, uh, one calcium, one calcium. Looks good. Okay. So now we can start to answer our stoichiometry question. If 83.2 grams of sodium nitrate is what we start with, how many grams of calcium nitrate can be produced? So we're going to start here with our T-chart. 83.2 grams of sodium nitrate, so Na, 
NO3. We're going to go from grams of sodium nitrate to moles. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the whole T-chart, then you can fill in with molar masses um, in a little bit. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to write here. Okay, after this step in my T-chart, where do I need to go? Okay, mole to mole. So moles, what should go on the bottom? Moles of what? NaNO3. What goes on the top? Yep, moles of calcium nitrate. CaNO3, 2. Okay, and here... In this step, what number should go here? One uh, and a two. One. Okay, these are these are our coefficients right from the chemical equation. Okay, coefficients. And then here we're going to take uh, moles of calcium nitrate. And moles here gets the one because we want to go to grams of calcium nitrate. And we need to have molar masses plugged in here. And here. Okay, do we have the molar masses to plug in here? What's uh, sodium nitrate's molar mass? 85. Okay, and calcium nitrate's molar mass is? 164. Okay, we multiply across the whole top, divide by the whole bottom. 80.2. 6, is that what you said? Grams of what? Calcium nitrate. Yep, good, because that's what's left in our T-chart. That's what we wanted to find. So calcium nitrate. Okay, building those equations and having them balanced, uh, having them at a neutral when you have a chemical formula like calcium nitrate or sodium nitrate, uh, will make all the difference in balancing your equation, which means we'll make all the difference in the mole ratio step. Okay, yeah, there should be a 2 up here. I just uh, didn't for some reason write that in. So up here, yeah. So is that the correct molar mass accounting for the two nitrates? Okay, great. So 80.26 grams of calcium nitrate. Let's try another one. Uh, if I combine lithium phosphate and aluminum nitrate, what will my products be? Go ahead and do this one on your own, and then we'll start the stoichiometry together. Okay, so here's uh, what I think the chemical formulas should be. Do we agree with those? Does everyone have those chemical formulas? We want to balance this equation. Uh, do we have a subscript for lithium phosphate? Or, I mean, a coefficient? Okay, what about for aluminum nitrate? Okay, what about lithium nitrate? We need a 3. And for aluminum phosphate... Nothing. Okay, so here's our balanced chemical equation. Yes, we agree, or no, we don't. Okay, so did we solve the stoichiometry yet, or we're we going to do it now? Okay, let's go ahead and start our stoichiometry solving then. We start with 311.12 grams of aluminum phosphate. So that compound right there. We want to solve for mass of aluminum nitrate, how many grams it will take to yield 311.12 grams of aluminum phosphate. So we're going to start with 311.2 grams of aluminum phosphate, ALPO. Four.
we need to fill out the rest of the T-chart, or is everybody pretty much good with that? Okay, so what do we get for our grams of aluminum nitrate? 543.5. Okay. We're going to talk now about something called percent yield. Uh, I want you to think of percent yield a little bit bigger picture um, right now. So everything we've been calculating thus far has been what we call theoretical yield. It's what's supposed to happen. It's theoretically how many grams we would get out of a reaction uh, if everything goes perfectly, if the entire reaction goes to completion, uh, and if there's no loss of products or reactants. So in a perfect world, all these calculations we've been doing, that's what theoretically we should get. This is how many grams we should get out. This is how many moles we should get out, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's theoretical. So we've been calculating theoretical yield. Okay, Percent yield means we're going to actually um, look at the percent of what we should have gotten as compared to what we actually got when we were in the lab. Okay, So we're going to look at the ratio between what we actually got and what we theoretically should have gotten. Okay, So you can think of this in terms of um, if I plant 10 flowers and only 7 flowers grow, what's my percent yield? 70%. Because I planted 10, only 7 came up, so I lost 30% of my flower somewhere. I lost 30% of my products somewhere. They died, uh, something ate them, okay, I lost them somewhere. So I only have a 70% yield. So my 10 flowers that I planted would be my theoretical yield there. The 7 that came up would be my actual yield. Okay, so our equation to find percent yield is this actual over theoretical times 100 will give us a percent. Okay, actual is what you actually yield from the lab. Theoretical is what your T-chart will show you. Okay, so anything that comes, anything that comes from your T-chart is your theoretical yield. That's how you can remember that. Anything that comes from your T-chart is your theoretical yield. Okay, so first of all, tell me what type of reaction this is right here. Combustion, good. Even though this hydrocarbon has an oxygen attached to the end, no big deal. Okay, we still get carbon dioxide and water as our products. So this is a combustion reaction. Oops. Okay, so we want to find out how many grams of water will be formed if we start with 36.5 grams of oxygen, and then we'll calculate our percent yield after that. Okay, so we still have to do a T-chart to find our theoretical yield, uh, and then we'll go to percent yield after that. So... We want to find our theoretical here from our T-chart starting with 36.5 grams of oxygen. <coughs> Remember when we deal with just pure oxygen now, it should be O2 because it's a diatomic. So grams of O2 is equal to one mole of O2. So now this molar mass should be yeah, 32, not 16. Okay, and our mole ratio step should go here, mole to mole. The only time we can have two separate substances in the same section of our T-chart is in our mole to mole step. So the oxygen coefficient should be a 6, and the water coefficient should be 3. Good. So now we want to get rid of moles of oxygen and go to what? Grams. Grams. And moles here gets the 1. Our molar mass of water is 18. Multiply across the whole top, divide by the whole bottom. Okay, we get 10 point what? Okay, so 10.3 grams of water. Okay, so is this our theoretical yield or our actual yield? This is our theoretical yield because anything that comes out of our T chart is our theoretical. Okay, so if we want to find percent yield, we're going to say our percent yield equals actual over theoretical. So this says if only 7.95 grams are formed, that means if they did this lab experiment, they only got 7.95 grams, that's your actual yield. So we'll take 7.95 <coughs> divided by... 
10.3, and we'll take that number times 100 because you'll get this as a decimal number. Okay. 77.4%. That means somewhere along the way we lost our about 23% of our product. Okay. They escaped. Um, we lost them somewhere. Okay. So we only uh, got out 77% of what we should have gotten. So it wasn't a perfect reaction. So let's try this one. Okay, this is our same balanced chemical equation. We're going to start with the... We're going to start with our percent yield and work backwards, okay? So we have 39.0%. 39 39.0% uh, is what we ended up yielding, okay? This is how much we started with here. So we want to find out what's, how many grams of H2 will be produced. So here is our 39% yield. This is what we started with. We want to find our actual yield. What, what component then are we missing? We're missing our theoretical yield. This is how much number we started with. That's how much we started with. We're trying to find how many grams will actually be produced if we have 39% yield. So this is our actual. We don't know our theoretical, so we still have to do our T-chart. Okay. So we're still going to start with the 40.8 grams. We're going to find our theoretical yield, and then we'll work with our 39%. Molar mass will go on that spot. What's our molar mass of C6H6O3? All right, so it's not 174. It's 126. So 12 times 6 plus 6 plus 48, because 16 times 3 is 48. All right. Oh, I didn't put my mole ratio in. So this should be 3, this should be 1. Sorry. Okay, so our theoretical yield was what? 17.49 or 17.5. Okay. So this is our theoretical yield. Our actual yield is what we want to solve for. Well, we know our percent is 39. So before we can do anything, we need to convert that 39% to a decimal point. Okay, so how do you convert 39% to a decimal point? Divide by 100 or move the decimal place 2 to the left. So this should be 0.39 equals actual over theoretical. So actual is what we're solving for, so we'll keep that just as an A. Our theoretical yield is 17.5 grams. So in order to solve for A, what should we do to these two numbers? Multiply. Multiply them together to solve for A. 6.83. What's our units then? Grams. Perfect. Grams of H2O. So what this is saying is that we started with 40.8. We knew we had a 39% yield. So this is what we actually got out of the uh, lab scenario was 6.83 grams. Does this number make sense if we only had about 40% of this 17.5 grams, which we're supposed to have? Okay, so we need to look back and kind of double check our answers to make sure that they make sense uh, in real life. Okay. Try this one on your own. 
I know it's a decomposition reaction. I spoiled that one for you. When it says produces, that means it actually produces that. It's, it's actual yield. Okay, they actually did it in the lab and they got 6.81 grams. So that means that's the actual yield. We need to find the theoretical. And we'll calculate percent yield from that. Are you...